Louder with Crowder Studios, protected exclusively by Walther. And Hopper. Talking, piece of shit. No, 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 As far back as I can remember, I always wanted to be a. I'm hungry. Hey, just some, how about just some Shut up, I said. Uh, get in there. Go ahead. Uh, Go ahead. Come on. Get in there. <sighs> As far back as I can remember. Yeah, it's bull it's bull I said shut the mouth, you're a million to uh, the night, mother I said shut your fucking out this ear blowing mouth, mother Shut the up! As far back as I can remember, I always wanted to be a late night producer. I know I'd go from rags to riches. This yeah. is called the. You know what? The pipes are horrible at hiding nipples. Yeah, that's <laughs> they're every literally every tool on my desk. They're you would think they would be made for something would be else. Would be better that at all to hide my are, are my are nipples considered among the unmentionables? No, I don't Men believe them. So. No, so. no. Hey, we have official representative Dan Crenshaw from the second district of Texas oh, today. Oh, yeah, so he'll be happy about this lead-in. <laughs> yeah. Uh, before we get, and we're going campaign. to be talking about the five biggest lies in relation to firearms. Of course, after these about mass shootings, Huge. we haven't really done a show. Uh, we can't, we'll get into it. A yeah, uh, question yeah. today. Let me ask you this: What do you think is the most egregious lie that me, the, the, the media's been pushing in the wake of the mass shootings? Is it just their complete butchering of the basic facts uh, regard, well, regarding firearms? I should well, say. of course. Yeah. Well, in general, they do that. Or is it that they're labeling half the country racists uh, guilty of mass murder just because they voted for Trump? I want to know. We have my lawyer, half Asian, real, uh, real, half Asian Bill <laughs> Richmond, Dan Crenshaw, He's coming real. up to save us after. Half real. Asian lawyer Bill Richmond, how are you, sir? Wonderful. Glad to be here. Real is a legal term. It is. Real. Yeah. Absolutely. It's a, it's a krill without the K. Oh, my gosh. Court of Black Garrett, wow. how are you, sir? What's up, Doc? And G. Morgan Jr., what's the line of the day? Uh, before I say that, I, I just want to say that it brings me personal joy in the intro to watch Bill burning in that jet every single time. Yeah. Just, so it really so touches sweet. my heart. So. You're so sweet. Uh, I have a, a bottle of Camus. Give you this. See the little 45 here? Nope. Right yeah. the end? Mm. Yeah, baby. Uh, president, you know, something like that. But Camus oh. Cabernet Sauvignon. President Wonder. 45. Yeah. Oh. He's number 45. So that's, know, uh, that's 45 cool. or, you know. Billy D. Williams did commercials Whatever. for that wine, right? Yeah, I have no idea. Uh, well, <laughs> that wine. <laughs> right over. I so got it. kicking things Stop off it. before we talk about we firearms, uh, musician Ed Sheeran has set the record for all-time highest grossing oh, concert oh, wow. tour. So congratulations oh, are in order. He's on a roll yeah. uh, lately as he's also been named world's handsomest deviled egg. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Oh it's uncanny. He can't miss. But, but, amazing. But that's amazing. He cannot miss. Did you guys, have you guys ever seen Ed Sheeran live? I, I've just seen him now. Yes. Other than that, I, mean, I, I said I've live. I saw him so, at my no. grandmother's right. last reunion. So here's the thing: you don't. There's. You want to watch Ed Sheeran when you can actually have sex with the person that you're with afterwards. We were waiting, and Ashley and I went to a concert. It's always back to sex. The worst. With you. It's the worst thing in the world. The you only went use, to an Ed Sheeran concert with some friends. 
Some friends Wait, invited me. Did they you know had you were friends? sexual intercourse? No, we didn't. At an That's, Ed Sheeran concert? No. <laughs> That's uh, what I'm saying. Not, it did not happen. In other news, <laughs> the Democratic <laughs> Socialists of America. By the way, if, if your wife gets, if that's a thing what, that revs her engine is an Ed Sheeran concert, you have a problem. No, no it's Ed, everybody likes Ed Sheeran. All the ladies. Uh, All the single ladies. So the Democratic Socialists that. of America <laughs> held its annual convention. And mm, before, lest you Lord. prejudge, it's exactly what you'd expect. Quick point of privilege. Quick point um, of personal privilege. Yes. Um, guys, uh, first of all, James Jackson, Sacramento, he, him. Point of personal privilege. Yes. Please do not use gendered language to, to address everyone. I have already oh. asked people to be mindful of the chatter of their comrades who are sensitive to sensory overload, and that goes double for the heckling and the hissing. It is also <laughs> triggering to my anxiety. Oh, wow. Oh, no. And uh, actually, go. you know what? We're oh. now receiving word. Oh. Yes, we're ready to make the call. Donald Trump yes. just won re-election with 48 states. We yeah, have a map oh. for you. Yeah. Wow, wow. yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh. Awesome. These people are just, they're too annoying for a special needs school. If you were to put them in the alternative school, it triggers my anxiety. Have some kids. Okay, handle. listen, I have actual special needs. Yeah. You're just an ass. <laughs> <laughs> He's missing a chromosome, yeah, but sad. you had to taper off your Zoloft. So we need to. This is the funny thing, too, about socialism, Democratic Socialists of America. Like, at least if you look at communism, the USSR. Right. It's yeah. about, it was about giving, giving the power, the means of production back to the workers. <laughs> Only these people don't want to work. <laughs> right. So what do you do? You can't it's all the just worst be. worst both worlds. <laughs> this is awesome. These people would have been taken out and shot. You the want, minute you stand up and say you're triggering I mean, my in, anxiety. In, okay, comrade. In <laughs> so, the Soviet Union, they expected to fight a bear for toilet paper, work yeah. 16 hours a day, and yeah. it still couldn't work. No. You want to restore, you want to restore the balance of power oh back gosh. to bloggers? I love this video. I mean, everyone's, I'm very confident that all of those arguments would have really been heard in Venezuela. I mean, they're just, <laughs> yeah. they're very yeah. conscious yes. of every you know, dictatorial of regime in all history. triggers. What's yeah. funny is he's, he, this guy is yelling at other socialists yes. for triggering his anxiety. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, if you can't be at the Democratic Socialist <laughs> Convention without your anxiety being triggered, by the way, they're not even clapping. Go watch the full video. What they're was, doing what are they this. doing? Yeah. This. Is that their support? Yeah, saying, yeah well, they used to do this tw down twinkles okay. and then it was mocked and they realized that this was also triggering because I don't know it's like a, maybe an animal in the wild uses this to signal danger like you know like the crab with the red underclaws <laughs> so now they do this like oh, stop the sensory overload listen I'm someone who has like a, I've talked about ADHD and so I do get sensory overload but yeah. you, you know like when too many things are going on do you know how I fix it Sh shut, shut up <laughs> that's stop. it stop comrades Just please uh, uh, guys can we I love, I love that guy he lost his mind about that <laughs> It just something. came from an Ed Sheeran concert. An Ohio woman, <laughs> oh. but he got me. Oh, come on. <laughs> Ohio woman, she lost Too her soon. hands and legs. We're going to get to talking about guns and the uh, the red flag laws with, with Congressman, uh, yeah. with Representative Dan Crenshaw. Uh, an Ohio woman lost her hands and legs after getting an infection from her dog licking her. Wow. This comes from a local affiliate. Doctors yeah. discovered the woman incurred a severe infection, not from a tropical travel disease, as they first suspected, but from her German shepherd's kisses. Huh. German oh. Shepherd's kisses. Yeah, police strongly suspect the dog was still sore about the Treaty of Versailles, it seems. So uh, <laughs> we should have known wow. Joseph Kibbles. Oh my gosh. Hey, you got to watch out. Count Dankily went down uh, for that, man. Switching to the 2020 race. <laughs> <laughs> Half Asian Bill Richmond is doing this. He's like, he wants to hit the pump. He oh, wants geez. to pump the brakes button he does. for this show. He wants a little he sign he can hold up. I don't think he no. saw the ride. He bought uh, a ticket. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I am on the ride. This I ain't no pony ride. ride, Half Asian lady. Right. Uh, <laughs> switching to the 2020 race. <laughs> Um, You've heard that story, right? Yeah. About Carney, who did that yes. with my dad. He was in the salt and pepper shakers, and for, he was too small to go on the ride, so he was loose in the cage. And oh. he's just, he's flail, he's getting just smacked <laughs> back from the cage. He's like, Mom! Mom! She's like, Oh my God, you have to stop the ride! And this Carney has a cigarette. I swear that my dad will confirm the story. He goes, Nah. This ain't no pony right, lady. <laughs> <laughs> Toughing him up. <laughs> My father was severely injured. Oh, no. Oh, okay. Wow. Switching to the 2020 race. Uh, Bernie Sanders, he, told, he was recently on the Joe Rogan podcast, and he told him that if he learns anything about aliens, he'll announce it to the public <laughs> on Rogan's show. Um, we actually have a clip of the senator's widely discussed appearance. Talking about so many deeply important issues, and all of them that will be under the control of aliens. If you found out something about UFOs, would you let us know? My wife would demand that I let DMT you know. DMT is the psychoactive ingredient that's in ayahuasca. Um, let me say this. You know, I smoked a couple of times. 
didn't do much Boom, for me. Off into the, no. off into the <laughs> other dimension. A- <laughs> and after what Senator Sanders watched while Alf plowed his wife. Oh, oh my gosh. UFO joke? Terrible. That, I guess, Terrible. It's, <laughs> Two How decades dare you too do late that to Alf. Hey, I was uh, waiting for the cat joke. Switching yeah, gears. Exactly. Mm, I'm telling you what, she certainly knows how to embezzle money from college, but I wish she'd put <laughs> on those cat ears. <laughs> <laughs> Terrible. That was my impression of Alf. Wow. Terrible. Mm. No, we got it. Oh, oh, now I have G. Morgan Jr. telling me about my terrible jokes. It seems I did crawl through a space-time continuum and end up in an unfunny parallel universe. You're still there. (laughs) Switching now. (laughs) I can be here all day. My name's on the ledger. Damn it. it. It's It's okay. It's okay. Lord help us. We'll go to something more substantive. Caitlyn Jenner uh, wants to be another now with... His, hers, hers, uh, girlfriend, Sophia huh. Hutchins, who was also yeah. transgender. This comes from the mirror. Caitlin's never had the chance to bring a child up in the role of a mother, so the oh couple boy. is getting a surrogate to make their long held dreams of motherhood come true. It, it, Caitlin Jenner's had the sex change, from what I'm under. I'm trying to keep track of this here. Yeah. And uh, the girlfriend has not. And so wait. <laughs> Right? Is that? <laughs> is that what this, this yeah, what adds think, up to? I think that, that maybe. This yeah. is, he's now claiming he's a lesbian, Caitlyn Jenner. Like I get the gay. I, I, th- I understand wait, the wait, gay. This is how far we've gone. I get to understand the gay thing. We're attracted to women. Most okay. of us. I don't know everyone in the room, but we're attracted to women. They're attracted to men. Understood. But a man okay. becomes a woman with a non-functioning vagina to right. become a lesbian with another woman who actually has. A John Thomas. I mean, wait, can, wait, yeah. wait, what? Mm. So this is it's just. <laughs> it's, I just. Can you imagine this? It's that just. You don't have a womb. Where are you going to come from? I'm a lesbian. <laughs> <laughs> this is impossible. The keep track of. By the way, this is impossible to keep track of. I mean, it's just so, dis- <laughs> so demented. Oh my god. And they try to act yeah. as though we there's something we're not getting. Yeah, and, and you know what? You're right. Yeah, we we don't get it. And by the way, uh, great. Great idea to bring a kid, an impressionable child, yeah. into that environment. It's a I, great hope, idea. I hope no judge in America allows that to the happen. K- kid's just gonna have his kid's gonna have his ear to the to the wall with a glass, and you're just hearing. Mm, <laughs> oh, <laughs> that's too sad. I don't want to. That is very sad. <laughs> Poor kid. <laughs> Finally, uh, before we get to the five biggest gun myths, uh, authorities say that actually a serial cat killer Aww. may be responsible for seven recent feline deaths. <clears throat> um, yeah, and there have oh. been quite a few. No, there have been quite a few. Re- although, actually, the latest one, considering the feline's Hebrew origin, the authorities oh. have filed this under suspected hate crime, which makes yeah. sense. Which, um, oh my yeah. gosh, Kibbles, I should have known it was. By the way, that's not a swastika. Oh, that's the Hindu symbol for peace. We wow. got that wrong in editing. <laughs> it's been so why does that why does that German Shepherd still hate Jews? I don't understand. Doesn't get peace. You're Does so confused, Joseph yes. Kibbles. <laughs> I hope you look in yourself and find what you're looking for. Um, no. All right, so let's move on from this. Any thank, other thoughts on Joseph God. Kibbles? No, nope. nope. let's move on. No, no, no. no. Let's get to, I want to hear what you think the worst. Uh, uh, I guess sort of worst fake news stories, worst misleading facts, the biggest outright lies regarding firearms, firearm ownership. Uh, in recent uh, recent days. So uh, here are the top five that we've compiled for you. In the aftermath, obviously, of, of these shootings, the, yeah. the left-wing media, they churn out fake news faster than yeah. something that churns things out really quickly. <laughs> <laughs> and a, a lot of this, it's aimed at disarming citizens, labeling half the country white supremacists, you know, the usual. Yeah, and from the most uninformed people possible, right? The, right. The, the, constantly call things the wrong thing, have never fired a gun in their life, and could care less. Of course. Yeah, and then they have to go to PTSD uh, yes. uh, uh, therapy from, the, from firing the AR-15. From the assault rifle 15 That firing. was the guy at the Democratic yeah. uh, National <laughs> Convention. Yeah. But you're like, well, hold on a second. You need PTSD from an AR-15, but you got PTSD from this. <laughs> Don't talk to anybody Point without a Point of personal a preference. Okay. Uh, it's no, the stimulatory overload. Oh, it was, it was, the, it was the twinkle down. The down twinkle down. Oh, twinkle yeah, down. That was yeah, the problem. Right. Everyone's yeah. been jumping on this bandwagon for the moral high ground. Even the president of Mexico has been demanding more gun control. <laughs> Not in Mexico, mind you, but here in the United States. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's rich. The that's president of Mexico, which by the way earned him a face-to-face state visit fr- from President Trump. Oh. Hey, don't get tough with me, Ricardo. About the butt, I'll kick your butt. Oh, hey, hey, you gonna cry for the Mexican boy? Cry for the Mexican boy, huh? Squirt a tear for me, huh? Have extra chips. Hey, Eric, it's right. I'm back down with you. Come on, cry. 
Come on, Andy Garcia, cry for me. Come on, Apocalypto, cry for me. Come on, cry for me. Come on. Wait. I can tell by the reaction in the studio that no one here saw the great Santini. We're going to help you wade through one of my favorite films, Robert Duvall. Look it up. Oh my uh, five lies uh, from the last week. So, fifth lie. Uh, this is one that we've heard a lot that Trump, this is one that's been parroted and it really bothers me. I even yeah. talked about it in the cell phone upload video. People saying, oh, I hear you saying this, but where's the source? All right, I've got it for you now, humdrum 84. Okay, I, just so you know, I've heard these old. This is a lie. You've heard it from me that, that President Trump made it easier for the mentally ill to purchase guns. Despite these recent references and talk about mental health, Donald Trump actually canceled an Obama-era safety rule that tried to prevent mentally Rug. ill people from acquiring <laughs> guns in the first place. One of the only major actions that President Trump has taken on gun control is to block an Obama-era rule that uh, made it harder for the mentally ill to have access to guns. The only thing worse well. than your fake news is your fake nose. That was like Janet Jackson. Oh. Um, <laughs> so here's the truth. President Trump reversed an Obama administration rule that stripped Second Amendment rights from all senior citizens who had been declared incompetent to manage their pension oh. or disability payments. Or drive. This is important. To, there are already <laughs> laws in the book that prevent crazies from buying guns. Right. People have been, the, the official term is adjudicated as a mental defective, yeah. right? Is that the mm -hmm. term, Bill? That's, that's the term. Do we, we never use adjudicated in any other term, it seems, outside of the legal sphere. Deferred adjudication? adjudication? Yeah, I mean, you almost never hear it, though. Is that it? Yeah. Right, yeah, very rarely. Maybe mm -hmm. on, you know, America's Next, Next Top Model or something. <laughs> or adjudicated the best. Are they? Really? Yeah. I think you're reaching. Yeah, uh, he is. <laughs> He's very zen, too. But is, think, about so. this for, think about how scary this is. Just because a senior might need help managing their money, right? Th does that mean they should lose their right to basic self-defense? Yeah, it's a little weird. Even, even little the, shocking, the right? ACLU had a real problem with this law and supported President Trump in reversing this. Yeah, and, and it's kind of, it's arbitrarily taking rights from people, just like when they had the no-fly list. Remember we had a problem with that? And people randomly ended up on the no-fly list for reasons that... They we're not a terrorist. That's right. not why they were on it. And they were saying, well, no, if you're on the no-fly list, you shouldn't be able to get a gun. I'm like, come on, guys. A uh, half-Asian bill is still on the no-fly list. Yeah, that's well, because he brought a therapy dog and ate it. That's reasonable. Yeah. I mean, you need food on a flight. <laughs> <laughs> not no, but, live food. <laughs> I mean, it wasn't eventually alive. Yeah. Oh, my talking? gosh. Well, hey, look, hey, this, thing, this point about the ACLU joining in on this particular rule and why it is an issue, Like, you, when you get to the heart of it, the question of how you're going to enforce certain rules related to people getting guns or not, and if you call it about who is actually going to qualify for this list, mm -hmm. and then one of the reasons why the NRA and the ACLU got together on one of these types of rules and tried to block it, and actually did block it, was because now you're going to give all of the private health information, all of the medical records, yeah. to the ATF to right. determine who's going to get guns. Yeah. And they said, you know, wait a minute, let's think about this before yeah. we decide to just share all of this information with yet another government agency who is not known for keeping great tabs on its records. Right. So, yeah. you know, there, there, it's a more complicated question than just, oh, we should just make sure that everyone with a mental health issue right. should not get a gun. And yet when you have issues like this, you get the far left media or just yeah. the mainstream media saying, well, it should be just very easy. Look, I can point out all the people who are crazy well, and keep them from guns, except right. really their definition is yeah. everyone. Yeah. Ethel doesn't understand what a hedge fund is. Take her longbow. I mean, do we really think? That, I think yeah. what all, the reason they came together is because no one assumed that 85-year-old men were going to be committing mass shootings. No, and yeah. and the reporters and the people in the left-wing media, they know this. They know it's a much more nuanced issue than that. But they feel like, oh, no, no, no. I, I hate that word. This isn't nuanced. No, no. Look it, up the law. It was if you can't manage your pension. It wasn't. It had nothing to do with being necessarily crazy when you're right. older. Right. So I would say that that's nuanced to them. <laughs> They, they took it as okay, people. Okay, Anna Kasparian. <laughs> <laughs> All right, lie number four. What's what's next, huh? You're going to uh, get get a nose job? Huh? What, do we go back to ah. Alfred? <laughs> um, I don't know why we did Tony Clifton. Yeah, I have no, no idea. Tony Clifton out of nowhere. Okay. It's inspired yeah, by I'm the TYT network. I don't know why. Uh, another lie that we've heard, this is one you've heard a lot, and it just drives me crazy. Anyone who's owned, this is one thing that we've talked about, hashtag gift a gun. Most, these lies go away once someone has ever purchased a firearm. Yeah. Once they understand the limitations on purchasing a firearm, right. once they understand yeah. what you can and cannot uh, procure in this country, they go, oh, oh, I, I now understand that these people yeah. are lying. So one that they use constantly is a, they, this wordplay. The AK-47 style rifle was used yeah. in these shootings. A police say that the AK-47 style rifle that Patrick Crucius used in the El Paso attack was bought legally. Went into the Walmart first to eat before going back to his car, taking out an AK-47 style assault rifle and firing. It's not a firearm, it's more of a bullet stylist. The El Paso shooter, 
Use a WASR uh, 10, okay? Now, yeah. unlike the AK-47, there's no select fire. Mm -hmm. This is a semi-automatic weapon. You're a competitive shooter, Bill. You see this all the time. They try to conflate automatic, sure. semi-automatic, yeah. and they just say AK-47 style. Well, I haven't, do you mean because it, it looks, looks like mean? it? Sometimes yeah. they're not even the same caliber. You mean, for example, I, mean, you I, you can, have AR, yeah. I have an AR-15 on a 22 platform. It's not even yeah. the same caliber as yeah. most people no. are referring to. Right, I mean, you can, the style that they're talking about is, is a look, right? Because right. if you're going to say, all it oh, is. well, I meant that it's AK-47 style because it has the same action, even though it doesn't shoot the same amount, you know, this type of r rapidity that you have with it, automatic versus semi-automatic. Yeah. Oh, but, but it looks the same, except you <laughs> can make a pistol look like an AK-47. Right. Yeah. I mean, and, and that's where it falls apart when you dig, when you scratch the surface. Well, right. They want to make it seem like it's this this war rifle, right? That you're going out there, you're holding the trigger down, and it's firing a, a gazillion bullets, right? And that's what right. they want you to think. I believe it's bazillion. Bazillion. Thank bazillion. you. But it's like it's like These most are the BBC. Terms yes. that will be yeah. charts that we'll get to in a minute. Yeah. yeah, like like most handguns, it's a semi-automatic. You pull right. the trigger, yeah. you get one bullet coming out. Right, <laughs> exactly. But AK an AK-47 is what they would call a weapon of war, where you have yeah. fully automatic burst fire, which we already know there are severe limitations. By the way, right. when we're talking about the actual AK-47 caliber fired uh, from a semi-automatic rifle, let's compare it to a very common hunting round, the .30-06. Do we have this right here? Can we show it actual size? Yeah. yeah. Look at that. Wow. So. There, there you have the six. On the right is yeah. the AK-47, right, the round. So this idea that it's this, this death round. This happened with the, right. the, the uh, AR-15 when they try to conflate yeah. it with M-16, right? People yeah. think it's this laser machine of death. No, it's <laughs> actually not. And any kind of a semi-automatic hunting rifle that has some sort of a detachable magazine could be far more deadly. Most people just aren't necessarily afraid of them because yeah. they have wood and steel as opposed to polymer. It's the wood. It really yeah. does the trick. All right. Uh, the Makes third, it safe. third lie that I have a real problem. Oh, let, let's just go to this right now, actually, is... Uh, <laughs> This be this whole this entire how this much of funny. this chart or digital pamphlet? This goes to me in the Hall of Fame uh, uh, as far as digital pamphlets, this along with funny. the Beautiful. please do not rape passed out in Cologne, Germany. <laughs> Look at this. This is keep this up here. This whole BBC <laughs> digital chart pamphlet. It wow. says that the uh, AR-15 can be fired. 1,200 times, per, up to 1,200 rounds will be fired per minute as an M16, a fully automatic, which is just an AR that's fully automatic, 950. Whoa, those are numbers. <laughs> and the AK-47, by the way, is also a semi-automatic. So basically, guns one through four, technically not a revolver, but all of those firearms outside of the M16 would be semi-automatic, but for some reason, one fires 50 and one fires 1,200 <laughs> per minute. Uh, well, like, can I ask you a quick question? What, what did it say next to the AR-15? Modified semi-automatic. Modified semi-automatic. I don't even know what that means. Does that mean it's modified to a fully automatic? Because it's yeah. still slower than the semi-automatic. What did they think that was the <laughs> minigun from Terminator 2? Like, I have no idea. <laughs> yeah. wow. That's 1,200 rounds a minute. Fine. They get all their information yeah. from action movies from yeah. movies, so. <laughs> Right below it was <laughs> Moonraker, and it still wasn't yes. as dangerous as the AR-15. Yes. <laughs> yes. <sighs> so true. By the way, when they were called on it, this is the worst part, they just removed the graphic from their article without yeah. any note or correction. No. Yeah, of course. This just highlights the fact that the media doesn't even care to do basic research. They, they're not looking over their shoulder for any kind of accountability. Right. No. Who's who's there to hold them accountable? Nobody. They just pull it out and don't say anything about it. And this is important. Too. This just this one is so obvious that we're laughing at it. But it just happens to be the one where they were caught. And you see how they <laughs> yeah, behave right. when they were caught. They don't issue. You know, we're talking about journalistic integrity, right? They talk about fake news and the importance of legitimate news outlets, right. like government-funded BBC. Retraction? Correction? No, we're just going to remove the, what is it? If, does that average out to 90 bullets per second? What's 1,200? Yeah, you're, you're, I, I cheat off your test not, in school. Not a math Asian. Oh, no <laughs> oh, no nails, funny. no railroads, no math. I'm not yeah. a math Asian. Yeah. Uh, by the way, hit the oh notification bell if you haven't already, because apparently subscriptions don't mean a whole lot, and YouTube's not nope. going to be a fan of this one. Uh, join Mug Club, loudofcutter.com slash Mug Club. You get the entire Blaze catalog, the daily show, of course, and uh, do subscribe on iTunes and uh, uh, like us, rate us there. Crowder Bits is a channel on YouTube. Yeah, now. If you yeah. guys want to watch Check the short uh, sketches and clips, a lot of them have featured Half Asian Bill Richmond. I, I did the math. It's 20. What? Per second. It only, it only took me like 30 seconds to figure it out. But really? Wow. I did. And you deal in cash times because your business 12, is vice. Yes. What were you saying? So, so, so one thing I was going to say is, vice. you know, when you talk about there's no fear of accountability. Yeah. But th that's exactly the point. There's no fear because the only point here is clickbait, right? You're, you're yeah. getting graphics. Yeah. Oh, you're yeah. you're fear mongering. You're saying, look at these bad things. Hey, friends on the left, continue to click, continue to pat yourselves on the back, ignore the facts. Let's just continue to roll with it. Right. And, and that's the only way that these kinds of things happen in the yeah. mainstream media. And what's so, what's so startling is then they want to silence shows like ourselves. When you look at Vox, yeah, right, right, what we talked about with that war, you look at Vox, NBC, it's a $2 billion company that wants to get rid of 
this channel. Now, I understand you can use different facts with different angles. You can make statistics. Uh, you can use it to massage your argument any which yeah, way you want. Right. I understand that, okay? I'm not one of those guys with a bumper sticker, uh, uh, liberals hate facts, <laughs> libtards. You know, they update right. it with that little addendum. That's not what I'm saying. <laughs> no, but yeah. here, in this case, there is nothing verified. I don't know where they pulled this. Like it contradicts their most recent information that they delivered. And the thing is, they want to get rid of anyone who can call them on it. Why? Because no one would know if not for places yeah. like yeah. us, if not for independent news outlets. No one would know that they didn't issue a retraction or a correction. Yeah. They just pulled it. Yeah. Well, and I guarantee you this chart is going to continue to make the rounds. It will live on and we're going to have to go, wait a minute, we've debunked that. Because the next time something bad happens, I hate to say it, but there will be a next time at some point. Sure. This chart's going to come rolling right back out and we're like, Okay, 1,200 again? Really, yeah, we're we back to, to that we one? We have to fight yep. this again? Again. The BBC yeah. stamp of approval. But people that yeah. just kind of peruse through some of the news, they go, oh, wow, 1,200. Yeah, we shouldn't have that. that, that, that that's crazy. That's a weapon of war. Right. right. And this is also the danger when people say, well, we mean the corporate media in the United States. And I understand. You have not a fan of CNN, not a fan of MSNBC. Right. Uh, and then you have Fox News, obviously. And I get that they're biased, but the alternative is government-funded news, like we have in Canada, or BBC. <laughs> right. So you Not suddenly good. believe they're going to be inherently altruistic if they're subsidized by Wrong. people who have a vested interest in them providing positive coverage and the ability to close the money valve? It's hmm. it's absolutely asinine. All right, here's yeah. the second worst lie, I think. We do have to get going. We have Dan Crenshaw, I think, waiting. Yeah. Um, this one really bothered me. You heard this all over the news. Outlet. We didn't have enough info about the Dayton shooter. Right? This was one. Yeah. I, I watched CNN for six hours the day of the Dayton oh. shooting. We were there We were there doing change my mind. All morning yeah. I was watching it. Uh, why? Well, it turned out to be a radical leftist who called the Antifa firebomber a martyr, okay? Uh, to give you a more specific example in response to an activist tweet about uh, what to do if Trump wouldn't leave the White House, the Dayton shooter responded, arm, train, and prepare. And wow. here's the thing, we knew uh, this was a radicalized socialist, far leftist, Elizabeth Warren supporter. When the media could no longer pretend that the shooter's background and ideology were completely unknown, what did they do? They pretended as though it was irrelevant at that yeah. point. Wow. So for proof, here's the DNC pool boy in chief, uh, Chris Cuomo, taking the moral high ground in covering the Dayton shooting. I don't talk about who these killers are. I don't want to get into their biography. They are, they are irrelevant in terms of why they did this and who helped them. We don't want to get into their motive or their background. Really, Mr. DNC pool boy in chief. Here's the easy part. A white nationalist coward who kills people to motivate a political cause is no different than an ISIS coward doing the same thing. They are both terrorists. Wow. And you know it. When it comes to El Paso, I guess we're a little bit murky on the DNC mm. rule book. So mm, yeah. that's how he covers Dayton, and then El Paso. So wait. He's a piece of shit, right? Is that <laughs> yeah? Is that about yeah, right yeah, with that, Chris Cuomo? Pretty pretty much accurate. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think I think one of the one it's of the hard most me. you don't get to shut this off. One of the most interesting <laughs> parts is is it's without question it's a, a matter of okay, are you gonna want to label or you're not gonna want to label? And if clearly, Cuomo and others are wanting to only label when it's convenient, right? right? Yeah. You just oh okay, sure they're neutral, but they only want to label when it's convenient for their friends, their groups, and the people who are supporting them. But really, this isn't this is an argument of we're all affected by this, left and right, yeah. by sure. people who decide to take horrible actions like this, mm -hmm. and we do need to come up with solutions, but the solutions don't always have to come from one single point of view, which is get rid of all the guns. Right. Yeah, absolutely. And the left spurs people onto violence in a number of different ways. But with Antifa, we just kind of have to kind of look the other way. And Black Lives Matter, right. not yeah. not yeah. really a big Nothing deal. To see here. Um, as somebody who has lived in Dallas and lived in Dallas for a long time, uh, that pisses me off because there were cops that were killed, mm -hmm. people that sure. ended up going to my church. And by the way, point. we don't want to play. We're not blaming Chris Cuomo for that. Yeah. But we are talking about no. people. And by the way, yeah, judges who allow, there, there are cases where Antifa, have, they've punched people in the face. They've blocked yeah. cars. Yep. Or for example, reached in, punched someone in a car. Yeah. And when the car drives off, they get charged for a yeah. hit and run. Yeah. This is a problem right now. It's a huge so problem. we don't want to pin it on any one person because this brings us to lie number one, that the El Paso shooter, this has been spread everywhere. What we used to joke about and people would say, oh, you're picking a small, you see this with leftist YouTubers all the time. They say, oh, oh yeah. you pick a small percentage of social justice warriors. That's not the left. The real left, right, most liberals, we want to talk about the issues in taxes. We're not offended by everything. We don't think everything's racist. Really? The number one lie that I saw was that the El Paso shooter was inspired by Trump's calling for the extermination of Latinos. That it was racist, yeah, wow, right? Yeah. This, and by the way, this, these are quotes on MSNBC. Nicole Wallace claimed that President Trump actually called for the Jeez. extermination of Latinos. You now have a president, as you said, talking about exterminating right. Latinos. To be fair, uh, we actually do have the clip of President Trump's now oh, infamous okay. speech about exterminating Latinos.
that was brought courtesy of the BBC. Yeah. No one <laughs> <laughs> called her on it on uh, the panel, but then she admitted on Twitter later on that she misspoke. And then instead lobbed other accusations of racism at the president. It'd be like you saying, hey, Stephen, that joke about me eating a dog on the plane was uh, racist, granted. And then me saying, <laughs> I'm sorry, I admit it now. But by the way, your country drowns girls. <laughs> it's just not fair. And Look, at that point, I, that's not even a joke. Right. It's, that's just that's, real news. It's just wrong. What were you saying? That, <laughs> what, what I was going to say Bill, is that. Gerald, how, I'm confused now. How, I'm at the new studio. I'm all disoriented. I know. How in the world can you be sitting on that panel? And I don't care how much you hate an individual, and I know that those people hate Donald Trump, but how can you be sitting on that panel and not correct this and go, well, well he, didn't, he didn't call for the extermination. I mean, let's, let's clean it up. Maybe not exterminate, but, you know, throw something right. in there. And I think one of the reasons that this kind of stuff happens, and it's just like that chart that we were talking about, this is going to make the rounds. Donald Trump called for extermination of Latinos, right. even though she apologized. There's no accountability. There has to be professional accountability. If something like that happens on your network and you say you're about news and you're about facts, you have to deal with it publicly and say she was wrong and right a retraction there. on Twitter you, is not enough. You know, you actually, right the moment before the clip cut, you actually heard the other person in the panel saying, right. Yeah. Yeah. They, I mean, it wasn't, just, just, yes, yes. wasn't just neutral. Yeah. She could have said it anything. Was, it would have been like, yeah. There we go. Negative to Donald Trump. That's yes, right. Yes. And yeah. the guy saying right was actually uh, Oprah's boyfriend, Stedman. <laughs> no. Just <laughs> made it up. See, fake news. I can do it too. Ah, 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 no. It says factual as Jeez. what she said. I hate myself right. and right. I hate you. <laughs> hey, so this Sorry. reminds me of one important thing. You remember we've talked about this. We talked about it. It changed my mind in Austin. You've talked about it many, many times, which is no matter what thing you think, if it's an amazing argument for your side or an amazing argument for an issue you're on or amazing argument for the other yeah. side, go fact check them. Yeah. Like, because normally if there's right. some amazing argument and you haven't heard of it before, it's probably because it's not actually true. Right. right. And so the, those are the kinds of things where people will just go, okay, great, forward, 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 forward. Yeah. And it's out in the universe, and you've contributed oh, to yeah. the problem. Yeah, there's and no so, way to pull so, back. So, you know, look, no matter what side of the argument you're on, we're probably not as all as far apart as we really think we are if we're actually looking at the facts. Right, right. I and agree. and people need to do that on both sides. No, I think we're pretty far apart. But um, <laughs> I do. Th here's one th we talk about this. Oh, the rhetoric, right? Yeah. Well, hold on a second. Um, if you, if all of us believed that there was someone out there right now in the United States who were a who was actively exterminating, for example, an actual Nazi, yeah, actually yeah. exterminating Jews, actually exterminating Mexicans, right? Yeah. A reasonable response if this person was committing an act of extermination would be violence, if that were the case. Sure. Yeah. So let me ask you, what do you think inspires more violence? Saying, listen, okay, some of them are great people, but some, some of them are rapists, all right, they're bringing crime, we need to know who's in here, which is very similar to the rhetoric of Obama, or someone saying, hey, this president exterminates Mexicans. Yeah. Isn't that more likely to inspire a brown person to go out and say, oh, they're going to exterminate me, they mean what they say, he mean what he say. <laughs> yeah. Well, and just like it And then has. do a hat dance on your corpse. Yeah, it, it, it already has spurred somebody onto violence, right? The ICE detention center saying, oh, they're throwing kids in cages, they're caging them up on the border and letting them die. Right. You're like, of, of course, that's an, if that's true and that's the only way to free people, then it's not so crazy. And this is something that's important. According to his own manifesto, what we think is his manifesto right now, because apparently it was posted by someone else. But let's go with the idea that it's it his own manifesto. Um, the shooter explicitly stated that he wasn't motivated by Trump. <laughs> I'm not wow. motivated by Trump. Motivated by Trump. No, no, I'm no. not motivated by Trump. He said the media would <laughs> say the, uh, yes, exactly. that I'm motivated by Trump, even though I'm saying right now and I'm he, not. Here's something important, by the way, because we've already de dealt with Dayton, who was a radical leftist. So let's deal with this idea that this guy was a white supremacist slash conservative because they want you to believe that two are interchangeable. Just like they want you to believe that Donald Trump wants They're to not. exterminate Mexicans. <laughs> I hate all the things. What's in here? Can I get something stronger from the yeah. bar? Um, notice the general stuff in the El Paso manifesto that's linked to Trump or Fox News could just as easily be linked to almost any politician. It's mm -hmm. boilerplate. It's just complete boilerplate immigration statement. Here you go. Yeah. By these standards, we could say it'll buy Obama inspired that. See, I'm getting so my brain shorts are getting. I'm like Bill, <laughs> Bill Superfoot Wallace in the first UFC. You ever see that? That's yes. a funny clip. Ever. That actually happened in the first <laughs> UFC. I do remember and he that. didn't move the camera. He was sitting there. Just and tonight, uh, I think it was with Brian Kilmeade. And tonight, we'll learn. <laughs> but he has a face and he's just like I want to be out of here but I have Lost. to continue but by Over these it. standards we could definitely say that Obama inspired the manifesto yeah. let me read a quote that way I can give my brain time to recover yeah, yeah. 
<laughs> he said, the American people are a welcoming and generous people, but those who enter our country illegally and those who employ them disrespect the rule of law. And because oh. we live in an age where terrorists are challenging our borders, we cannot allow people to pour into the United States undetected, undocumented, and unchecked. Hmm. Americans are right to demand better border security and better enforcement of the immigration laws. Racist. Hell. We could say that inspires. Huh. I mean, you can look at the Flores uh, consent policy uh, yeah. under Clinton, back to while, while, we're, while we're talking about people in cages. And you could say he inspired the manifesto. Yeah. And sure, there are clear sort of right-wing aspects of the ideology, but a large part of the manifesto, people don't talk about this, was devoted to neo-environmentalism. <laughs> yeah. the, the type that we yeah. hear ranted about by uh, Ocasio-Cortez. He even quoted the Lorax as inspiration. Wow. This is a crazy person <laughs> who was inspired to mass murder people by a children's film, and it wasn't even Pixar. <laughs> And here's something just as important. This, this is general, broad stroke, where they say Donald Trump, because Donald Trump says we need to close the borders, as everyone has. But the very yeah. specific content that you see that's unique to the manifesto is, is like Richard Spencer-esque white nationalist socialist stuff. It's pushing for yeah. universal health care, universal basic income, but we can only afford it if we get rid of immigrants. Yeah. That's what he was wow. talking about. This is, this is what's so alarming to me. If you read it, when people say, oh, you think Nazis are socialists, they were nationalists. National socialists party, right? The same thing, yeah, neo-Nazis are it's just socialists who watched a little too many Edward Furlong films, okay? They think, <laughs> if we just got rid of Probably. brown people, if we just got rid of immigrants, we could have socialized everything. That's not conservative at all. And one thing, no. uh, one thing, and we have to go on this, that really pissed me off. Did you see the Chris Cuomo tweet where he was saying, mm -hmm. actually, uh, if you look at, uh, was he talking, was it Scalia, I think? He said, if you look at Scalia, he actually was the one who rewrote the Constitution, inserted right. in the Constitution the right to private firearm mm -hmm. ownership. So, originalists, you should know that, hold on a second. No. Again, that wording, do we have a different constitution now? <laughs> no. no. What it was was an interpretation of the original intent from yes. the constitution, which is crystal is clear so when you look at all the founding documents yes. in tandem together. You probably, Bill, you know this more than anyone, but mm -hmm. I have to get moving on this here. Go back to Heller versus D.C. This is something that they don't tell you. Okay, Heller versus D.C. is that case where you look at the dissenting opinions. Yeah, we're talking about Scalia. The, the decision, thank God, said, of course, private citizens have the right to own firearms. Yes. So yeah. when you look at the dissenting opinions in that case, it wasn't oh, we should get rid of fully automatic weapons. No. It wasn't background checks. It wasn't gun show loophole. It was when you have people like B Ginsburg saying, private citizens have no right to own a firearm whatsoever. Yeah. That was the only legal argument made. You can read it. Heller versus DC, search it right now. But Chris Cuomo won't say that, why? Because he knows that that is just as unpalatable to you as the idea of people going out there with panzers down the street, right? They say, yeah. most Americans support reasonable gun control. And then they quote Heller versus DC, hold on a second, do they consider reasonable gun control? You can't own any <laughs> firearms yeah. at all? Because that's what the leftist judges said. And to give you an idea, when you look at this unholy amalgamation of big tech and, and, and media and the government, I was working with Google, right? Google actually came to me, YouTube. They huh. came to me and told me, hey, start what? running some ads on YouTube, yeah, right? Yeah. Start running your videos as ads on YouTube. And uh, I said, well, I don't know about this. I said, no, let us help you uh, start a campaign. One of the videos was uh, a video that we did about the gun show loophole. So I started yeah. running this as an ad. And she said, oh, wow, this is interesting. Maybe I'll watch this when we're done. By the way, I have all these emails in case anyone has questions. So you can keep the, uh, you, <laughs> yes, you, you can track you, this right? for me. Yeah, I'm tracking and I said, them. oh, wow, what, what's interesting? She said, well, you know, I don't really know. I haven't really fired a gun. I said, oh, you've, you've never shot a gun? She said, no, no. I said, you ever owned one? She said, no, no, never owned a gun. Anyone in your family ever owned a gun? No, no, no. I said, oh, where do you work? She worked in, I think, product management or an ad development, you know, one of those made up terms. And I said, oh, yeah. so do you know anyone who owns a firearm? She said, no, it's really not that kind of place. No one. I said, so you don't know <laughs> anybody Jeez. who has ever owned or shot a firearm? The answer was no. And these people are meeting with representatives to determine firearm policy, oh, which, by the way, includes the idea, the dissenting opinion, that you have no right to own a firearm whatsoever. Think about that for a second. Mm. Think about those people being in control of your aspect, of this aspect of your God-given right to self-preservation. And if it doesn't send chills down your spine, then maybe Caitlyn Jenner, eat my hey, Well, I have no idea. We have uh, Representative Dan Crenshaw. We have to go. Thank you, guys. We'll be back. Yeah. Don't do it in my club. It's bullshit. It's all bullshit. Okay, the money doesn't even go to veterans. If you're a veteran, that's absolutely right. Okay. You're talking. Google oh, it. Piece of shit. Oh, shit.
Look at this pile of trash. Yeah, you. Look at you. You look like a sack of shit. What you need is some Louder with Crowder merch. Here. There you go. Much better. Yes, admire its beautifully made design. Love sewed in every stitch. Doesn't fix ugly though. Get your flabby ass some merch at louderwithcrowdershop.com. And for losers who can't scrape together $69 for Mug Club, it's a great way to support the content on which you so fervently freeload. Your faces. 69. Now it's time for new believable people, and we must do it. If we don't control insiders, this will be over and over. To lead it by if, I, if I think about the fact that somebody says, like, we need to have a wall on our border. I believe he has a record of, of saying racist things. Okay, um, like what? I'm from Germany. We had a wall. He told a few of the, the commies, and, I mean, it's, Did you just say commies? I think he tried to take the, uh, the, the free phone away. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That doesn't mean he's a racist. That is racist. So many people wanted to come to Germany. Do you have any idea? We have like a million refugees. We accepted them all. All? Yes. Okay. That was it. How's that working? If your reasoning into that is, oh, hey, he's Mexican, therefore he's going to be biased against me. I think that's going to be. That's, that's like people are arrested in Germany, jailed for speech. No, no. Yes. They're arrested. They're arrested if they use hateful speech. Because of course they are. Okay. So you want Nazis? You, want you guys started it. America first. America first. What is it? Is that the po which which uh, film is that from? I think that's Harry Potter. Is it Harry Potter? Maybe. I don't like the films. They all run together for me. I remember seeing the first one. I remember where I was. I saw at Cinema Guzzo. And then the other ones bleed together. I remember something about yeah. giant spiders and ladies this, this in this mermaids and seaweed. It's the second one. I don't know. That's all I remember. Point yeah. is... They're not great. Not a fan. Uh, all right. <laughs> next. Uh, well, maybe our next guest, we can ask him about hey. it. You know, I have no idea. He's a millennial. Uh, I don't think he's technically a millennial, I is he? So. I, I think, think he's Generation older. Y. Maybe. It goes millennial. Let's go Y, millennial, and then Generation Z. I don't know. He's a representative uh, from Texas, the second congressional district in the United States. You can follow him on the Twitter at Dan Crenshaw T X T X there, because I think someone else might have Dan Crenshaw. Representative Dan Crenshaw, how are you, sir? Doing great. Thanks. I'm technically a millennial. I'm an elder millennial. Really? Right at the cusp. Really? Yeah. I, uh, now, wh how old We're are you? We're not a bunch. 35. 35. Okay. Well, you carry it well. <laughs> uh, but <laughs> are you a Harry Potter fan? I guess that's... Do you remember where you were when you saw the first Harry Potter film? I don't. I mean, this is a long time ago, isn't it? Harry Potter? Like 20 well, years. I'm, I'm glad to see that our, the brightest among us... Uh, I'm glad to see your long-term memory is intact. Uh, <laughs> makes me yeah. very, very confident in my representation. Um, yeah. Okay. I, I, I don't hate the movies. Oh, okay. All right. Well, uh, speaking of which, AR-15s, you caught a lot of yeah. flack recently. Just, uh, I, I like AR-15s. You do, as do I. Um, and you said that it was actually... You caught a lot of flack from the left, which surprised me. We've just talked about this at length. You said it was possibly the ideal firearm to uh, for to, to defend your home in a home invasion scenario, and you talked about kind of about that twenty to thirty yards. Why it was effective? Explain for people who don't yeah. know, because you know Samantha B, Stephen Colbert, they've gone out and said it's not useful for hunting and it's a horrible choice for home defense. Why, in in your estimation, is it a good firearm for home defense? Okay, I actually didn't realize Samantha B said that. If she said it, maybe I should reconsider my views. Yes. On this. Also, your vagina <laughs> should yell. Yeah. Yes, that's yeah. the thing as well. So you lost me there, but um, <laughs> she lost all of us there. So that's the thing. But she still gets so much money. But okay, so AR-15, good for home defense. Yeah. Your case. So, so you're referring to a, a video I recorded with the Daily Caller. I, I don't know if the video is still up. We were actually in the process of editing it still to make it kind of a more informative video. Mm -hmm. And then it got put up on the internet, and then it got taken down. I, I'm not sure if it's up anymore. Doesn't matter. Here, here's the bottom line. What I was talking about in that video was the tactical usefulness, utility of an AR-15, especially, especially if you're not that well trained on a gun. Right. So I just want people to imagine this, especially if they've ever been to the range. 
when you are scared and it's dark and you're trying to shoot rapidly, you're not that good with a pistol, right? You have a hard enough time hitting the paper target in a well-defined lane on a range with a pistol at say, you know, seven to 10 yards. Yeah. Imagine a little bit longer, a little bit, a little bit higher of a range. Imagine just across your living room or down the hall and, and imagine where your, your adrenaline is pumping and, and it's dark and you're not sure what to do. Uh, it becomes infinitely harder to hit that target. You know, a pistol is just harder to use. You only have two points of contact on it. Uh, the, the sight rails are close together. It just makes it harder. A rifle is far easier. The, the kick, the, the, the kick isn't as hard. Um, it's easier to reacquire your target. Um, and you have three points of contact on it, both hands and your shoulder. It's just more accurate. And it's also much easier, especially for women to use. And especially for people who just aren't that well trained. Again, for me, like I, I don't mind, I don't mind relying on a pistol for self-defense, even at a certain distance. Right. But, but you know, in this, and what I talked about in that video too, and the SEAL teams, our primary weapon in close quarters is still a rifle. We don't, we don't just switch to a pistol. We only switch to a pistol in, in extreme circumstances or if we're clearing a closet. Right. And even yes. then. Yeah, pretty mm -hmm. much. And, you know, mm -hmm. uh, in my years in mall security, my weapon of choice was African throwing knives. <laughs> so I don't need to imagine uh, 100 yards because I can hit that all day with just a recurve bow. But, you know, yeah. while we're humble bragging. Yeah. Uh, no, I think this is important because a lot of people need to understand that an AR-15, you know, my mother-in-law doesn't shoot a whole lot. And she was at 100 yards boom, boom, uh, shooting two liter bottle, this out, outdoor range where we go in this beautiful little valley. And it's very, yeah. it's very Zen for her. She said, man, I really enjoy this. It's therapeutic because she realized after a half hour, she was just focusing on shooting. And unlike yeah. a shotgun, which she never wanted to touch again, very low recoil, easy to control, pretty easy to learn the controls of the firearm. And it, this is about empowering the most vulnerable among us. People like women, people exactly. like the elderly, people who aren't going to necessarily kick ass or deadlift. I think it was 345. All right. So I want to <laughs> move on much, to – I can't – I can't, more than that. I can't hear you. I can't hear you. It was more than you by five pounds just because I could. Just, oh. After this, uh, so the shooting, <laughs> Do President Donald Trump mentioned red flag laws as a possibility, okay? So I want to talk about this because then you, you've been catching flack from the left and you've also caught some, um, some guff, I guess we could say, from, from the right. Uh, he said that uh, we must make measures, uh, make sure that those judged to pose a grave risk to public safety do not have access to firearms. And if they do, those firearms can be taken through rapid uh, due process. And you mentioned the TAPS Act, um, maybe also implement state red flag laws or gun violence restraining orders. So a lot of people obviously not thrilled about this idea, a lot of uh, conservatives. And to be fair, you were more open-minded and said, may maybe there is a solution here, maybe there isn't. Can you explain specifically uh, to people what it is that you, you think you'll be proposing so that they yeah. don't misinterpret it? We already have, but, uh, but and I appreciate the nuance you added to that, which is I said maybe. <laughs> maybe maybe we look at these at the state level right on the taps act which i am in favor of uh, i'm a co-sponsor the the taps act is has gotten there's been a lot of misinformation out about it and it's it's i'm not sure where it's coming from but here here's what it actually is it is a grant program that allows local law enforcement to use the same tools and analytical analytical tools and training on behavioral threat assessments that federal law enforcement has been using for 35 years Okay. This doesn't change the law in any way. It doesn't change their ability to implement the law. It doesn't change who they target. It just it just gives local law enforcement some of the same tools that, say, the Capitol Police have or other federal law enforcement agencies has. Uh, so can I ask you a, a, quick question, can ask you a, quick, a quick question sure. then? Because this is important for me. Is this kind of congruent with the laws already in the book? So, for example, we have strict background checks, felons, uh, violent criminals. They can't legally obtain firearms or those who've been declared mentally defective in a court of law. So do these the, – does the TAPS Act or what people are calling red flag laws add to that at all? Or does it just reinforce what we already have kind of on the books? It would reinforce it. And I would say there's almost no relationship whatsoever between the TAPS Act and red flag laws. Okay. Two very different things. Uh, when, it, when it comes to the TAPS Act, it, it really has nothing to do with guns. Uh, this is just criminal behavior in, in general. Now, obviously, it could prevent people from engaging in mass shootings for sure, but the TAPS Act has nothing to do with gun control at all. Okay. Uh, on the red flag laws, you, you, did, you asked an important question. And you're, what you're pointing out in the process of asking that question is the fact that under current federal law, there's already a lot of reasons why you might not be able to own a gun. Right. Okay. A lot more than people maybe even realize. Uh, you engage in threatening behavior under some kind of restraining order. 
uh, you've engaged in domestic abuse, you're a felon, you've been discharged dishonorably from the military. Things like this prevent you from owning a weapon. Red flag laws are really designed to fill in the information gap, right? Because that prevents you from buying a weapon, but what prevents you from actually having it when you are engaging in threatening behavior and therefore infringing on the rights of others? I mean, this is this is an important basic foundation of why government exists and why laws exist. Right. It's to prevent citizens from infringing on the life, liberty, property of other citizens. We monopolize the use of force as a government in order to prevent injustices done against each other and also to protect rights. But those rights get taken away when you start infringing on other people's rights. So right. It's a very just basic conservative philosophy. When we talk about red flag laws, and, and, and you're probably going to get to this question, but maybe I'll just go ahead and answer it, which sure. is, how do we make sure they're done right if we're going to even talk about these things? And that's a legitimate concern, right? There's a due process concerns. There's people's concerns that can your neighbor just call in a, a, a something, call the police against you, and then you have your, your guns taken away? Well, we wouldn't want any of that, and, and we, we should have those concerns. And I think there's certain stringent safeguards that need to be put in place to ensure that due process uh, would be adhered to, such as uh, multiple points of evidence. Okay, not it can't just be one person's testimony. There has to be actual evidence presented. And it has to be clear and convincing, uh, not not even just a preponderance of evidence, but I think clear and convincing evidence. Uh, the, the, any there should be a punishment for somebody who files a false claim against someone else to deter that kind of uh, you know sort of vindictive behavior. That, that, we might that was be going to be about. one of my questions. Uh, it seems to me that would be a necessity. Uh, otherwise, you end up with sort of the, the frivolous medical lawsuits, right, where someone can just chase an ambulance and sue and sue and sue without any recourse. Only in this case, you're stripping someone of their God-given right, right to, to self-defense. So that would be something that you think would be right. necessary in there as a safeguard, a penalty for falsely reporting. I, I think so. I think conservatives need to have a list of, of requirements. And, and that list is out there, by the way. We've had hearings about this. Uh, scholars from the Cato Institute, Libertarian Think Tank, have pretty much outlined what we would need to see in order to make this uh, plausible. And another thing I would add is who has standing to actually make the accusation? Some state laws limit it to family members, uh, household members, police, doctors. Uh, I think Cato suggests that we actually only limit it to police, so that only police can look at the evidence and say, we have standing to there now take it to a court and have a judge rule on this based on the evidence given. Uh, and, and based on the ability and based on due process, you need to be able to argue your case back as well and have an attorney present. So, well, I guess we kind of, for me, and forgive me, I'm not, really, I'm not, I don't mean to be simple, but that does come back to my question is, and what's, what's wrong with the due process that we have now? You know, a judge right now can, you know, adjudicate yeah. you mentally defective. Why not stick with that and just make sure that, you know, the crime reports are being submitted? Because we have some laws in the books. You know this, I, I don't remember if it was Parkland. It's tough to keep track of the shootings, but some local law enforcement just didn't submit the reports that they were supposed to. You know, you had a kid who had, who had beaten his mom, who had taken firearms that weren't his. But why... I guess my question is, well, how does this process that you're describing differ from what we have now, innocent until proven guilty and proven in a court of law? And why is that a good thing? Because for the same reason, we don't want only cops to have guns. We don't want only cops to determine right, who can right. have guns. Yeah, th that is a good question. It fills an information gap. So uh, right now there are, there are there are laws in place. And, and I think in Parkland, they, they could have arrested him for his threatening behavior, um, maybe taken his weapons. That was an extreme case, though. There were so many red flags that right. you didn't even need a red flag law. Red flag laws kind of operate in, in between, right, where you don't want to necessarily arrest somebody and, and actually take away their entire liberty, uh, but they are exhibiting threatening behavior. And in addition, they're, they're, they're filling an information gap in order to enforce the laws that you know you already can. The, the, that process is not very clearly in place right now, and I, and I, and I think that would be – that would be where these laws actually come into play, if that makes sense. Well, a little bit. I think that it would need to be crystal clear for conservatives, including myself. I want to be fair here. You know, I don't I don't want you to think that I go out there public and say, like, ah, I'm against red flag laws and just be friendly because I, I enjoy your company. But for me, it would have to be crystal clear because, yeah, I am pretty leery about this, obviously, in the same way that, you know, listen, on, yeah. on Twitter, we can have people who dox me, right? On YouTube, we can have people who go out there and threaten my family. And it's not a violation, but someone deems it a violation if we 
criticize a public figure. You know, it's not enforced equally, and that can happen anytime there's a margin for human error, whether it's a, a judge or a police officer. I guess to put a fine, finer point out, let me kind of present a hypothetical, and maybe this might, might help as a thought exercise. Let's say like an, an angry wife wants to hurt her husband or her ex-husband. Uh, he owns many guns, AR-15s, pistols, shotguns, like my recurve bow, African throwing knives, all of it. Not as efficient as me, but he has all of it. And she knows that he owns many firearms. So uh, she creates a story about him being abusive, uh, not necessarily with evidence. He hasn't been convicted of domestic abuse, but she does get a restraining order. People need to understand that you don't need to be necessarily convicted of a serious crime for a restraining order to be issued. Uh, then tell, she'll tell her the authorities that her ex-husband is unstable, abusive about how many guns he has. He's a danger to those around him. What's the process like? And let's say there's a gun confiscation that's, that's ordered. It turns out he's innocent. Is it reversed? Because then you end up with the kind of guilty until proven innocent. I mean, this is something that definitely is, is tough for me to process. Yeah, first I would say any any new law and process that, that gets implemented still operates within the context of our criminal justice system, which adheres to the philosophy of innocent until proven guilty. That would never change. The due process aspect of these things would not change. Um, even, even though there's a lot of concern that they would, I see no evidence of that and, uh, and no evidence that that would change it. Um, you know, in, in that specific scenario, it, it, it's hard to tell. I think I just agree with your point, though, that the preponderance of evidence would have to be very, very crystal clear. It should not you should not allow this to happen based on the testimony of one person. And especially if that one person is not providing any actual evidence uh, that as conservatives, when we when we have this conversation. And by the way, we need to have the conversation. What, I, what I'm seeing online sure. a lot is a lot of people refusing to have the conversation. And, and, and reacting to what are basically straw man arguments. Right. We have to have the conversation. And, uh, and, and if we're going to, though, we, we, we put thoughtful limits in place on what we would actually agree to. And, and a very substantive uh, standard of evidence would certainly be one of those. And the scenario you're describing, I would never agree to. Right. You know? be because we've had a lot of people on the left say, well, this person is on the no-fly list. I mean, I'm sure you know many, I know many people who've been put yes. on the no-fly list because exactly. they have the same name <laughs> exactly. as people who are on the no-fly list. And people act as though I'm crazy. We talked exactly. about that conversation. I said, well, hold on. It's not a terrorist watch list. It's an arbitrary list, you know? And so I would hate to see this morph right. into that. I think that's a legitimate concern. But I do think that it's we are at a point where we can discuss what within the parameters of the Constitution, the current rule of law we have, would be more effective. Um, and there are some options out there. It, I, I just think, and maybe you can you can help with this, there aren't many people out there who have a direct line of communication with their constituency, um, as you do. I think it would go a long way to explain it, you know, to the letter so that people at least know what, what they're supporting or what they're against. Yeah, and we're putting that together, and I would encourage everybody to look at Senator Graham's bill, Senator Rubio's bill and uh some of the some of the safeguards that they w w would ask to be put in place it, in the end I, I'm, I'm not i'm not advocating for federal implementation of this either right. uh one of the reasons it needs to be done at the state level also is is because that's where criminal law is written mm -hmm. and so it's it's not clear that you could even write it perfectly at the federal level because all states uh implement um you know be, these laws differently whether they're whether they're gun laws or, or whether they're mental health laws or whether they're domestic abuse or restraining order laws, a lot of these might have to be tailored at the local level. Right. Yeah, I think it would be necessary. There's no way it could be done at a federal level. All right. Well, I do. we do have to get going. I appreciate you taking the time, uh, Representative Crenshaw. That's at Dan Crenshaw. TX, and uh, I hope we have you on soon. If, as, as this develops, if you'd like to talk about it more, we'd love to have you on and explain it because I know these kinds of proposals, these bills, and then eventually, a law, oh yes, they change. And so please do keep us abreast as it unfolds, uh, Representative Crenshaw. All right. Thank you That's very great much. Great to be with you. We'll Thanks. be back after this ish. This is for all you lovers out Uh, oh, we're doing this? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>
Don't be a crybaby. Join Mug Club at louderwithcrowder.com slash mug club. That's called the uh, cocky prankster who then uh, loses confidence when he realizes that he doesn't know how to swim. Oh. You jumped in, he didn't, as yeah. my brother would often do. Yeah. He would say, ah, first one for the season guy. wins, didn't whatever. I would jump in, because this was Montreal, it was very cold in the winter. I never got the prize, and he would laugh at me. Um, but if he didn't know how to swim, he would get in and immediately regret it. Unfortunately for him, he didn't know how to swim. He would get in, swim very well, and dunk me, mind you. I was always the older brother, so I, I never jumped Did in. you beat up your uh, little brother? I did. Did you? Do you feel yeah. bad about it all? No. Okay. All right. <laughs> and we pass it on to our ne- to to our next generation. Learn something. It's okay. You, know, you just don't want to. You never punch your brother in the face, though, right? No. No, that's the rule. You don't punch in the face. You no. can punch. That's the face and the yeah. groin. That's not cool. Right. Exactly. Unless it, unless you're both it's, agreed. It, yeah. You're gonna throw shoes at each other's crotch. Well, that's fine. Yeah. I remember my brother cry on a youth retreat one time because I threw a hacky sack at his balls. I think I've told this story. Okay. Before I get to that, I know it's supposed to be inspirational, something to yeah. close. <laughs> he was, it was a youth retreat, and he was sleeping. And this is one of those things. I, I don't know why I did it. I didn't think about it before I did it. But I had one of those. And there's a good, there are good hacky sacks, and there are bad hacky sacks. Yeah. And the good ones have that you know, inertia. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? They it's almost the, like the hefty. Yeah, it's almost like the leather blackjack that Jelly would use and analyze this to knock people out. Like, <laughs> you know? So he, I was walking, and I just saw him, and he was sleeping. And he was sleeping, and one of his legs happened to be like this. And it was just this, I mean, it was magnetic. Right? I just walked by and looked, and this thing had inertia, and I just, and it had the perfect rotation, had the wow. perfect wrist flick, and you heard, like, I never forget the sound, you heard like a, like. Oh, no. <laughs> but, <laughs> you pinned the, it. The reason you I'm probably still, pinned it. The reason I'm still laughing, I'm sorry, this is way too long, is that he, <laughs> he woke up screaming. <laughs> I saw, he woke up, I, it's, like, it's here, I swear to you, I'll never forget it. He just woke, <laughs> and, started, and his eyes were like I got punched in the nose. And I had to call down by our pastor. And they had to call our parents because I oh. hit my own brother in the balls. <laughs> but he woke up oh. in just we're gonna call your parents object terror. Uh, so I'm sorry about that, big That's brother. Um, all right. <laughs> so um, this is what I wanted to talk about here today. A little bit. I think this is important. Um, I want to change, hopefully, or at least get people. I know, let me put it this way. I can't force you to change your point of view. But I've certainly, as I've grown, changed my point of view on, on the idea of wealth and success. And certainly, I think societally, we look at it through this prism, which is not only inaccurate, but I think harmful. Let me start with this. I'm going to have to meander around a little bit, but stay with me. Um, we posted an Instagram post after the Change My Mind where we were, uh, you know, just having, we were having a Yingling, I believe. Yingling yeah. and Sam Adams, two conservative Sam breweries. Adams. Uh, after we had taped change, it was a very long day. You know, I was in it that was. seat for five something hours and we had the crazy guy who people have seen. We have another change my mind coming out yeah. Tuesday. Um, so we're on this plane just saying, hey, great job. And uh, my wife posted it. By the people think that I, it's, it's not my plane, it's not a jet, but I'll get to that in a second. Um, we had a lot of, you know, people got mad saying like, oh, how could, how could you show that you have a private, private jet? Like I said, it's not mine, it's not a jet. Uh, yeah. But the reason I removed it was because, and my wife posted this, you know, she follows me sometimes, and she posts things when they're kind of candid moments because she has a better eye for that than I do, and I don't want to have to be posting everything to Instagram. Um, but the reason I w- wanted to remove it was not because of the, you know, obviously you have like glorified socialists who covet other people's stuff, and it's not even my stuff, but I never want the social media profiles that we have or this show uh, to be about image or to be about what we have. I've always wanted it to be about the content, about who we are. 
And I think that's a lot of social media profiles out there. That would be my first challenge to you, to try and for a week not post about your, your climb uh, up Everest or whatever it is, Kilimanjaro. You see this, these, you know these people all the time like, look, yeah. just living life, and it shows them on a hiking trail with a perfectly fu- – so, I do on. this every day. Right. Well, that doesn't define who you are. You're just trying to post cool stuff or yoga pants, the, the ass models on Instagram. That's a whole new category, Instagram ass model. Here, sell some fit tea. <laughs> I don't know. I just lost sound in one of my headphones. There we go. I fixed it. I sma- I, that's what got me mad enough. Was so about yeah, the so ass aggressive. models at Instagrams. Um, Watch out. But I've always wanted to make it the focus about, about what, we, what we provide with, as far as content. And, and um, you know, that's, that's, that's tough to do. There are a lot of people out there who really just want to focus on the, the accoutrements of wealth and how much they've spent or what they have. But let me explain this uh, really quickly, too. Going back to the plane. The plane belongs to a friend. Um, you know, I'm a very wealthy friend of, of mine, uh, of the show, a guy named Kevin. And he has fundamentally changed the way that I look uh, at wealth. Not that I ever vilified the wealthy. I didn't, I didn't have a, uh, a chip on my shoulder about them. But uh, I think a lot of us perceive those who are wealthy as, as maybe people who focus uh, on finances too much or that maybe there's kind of a, a life budget where they haven't spent enough time with their family. That's not necessarily the case. This guy, Kevin, he's a really generous person. Um, and he's an incredibly compassionate person. And one who's able to make a huge difference, an impact uh, on the world and his community with the tools at his disposal. And I don't just say this for, for us. It's been, he's been a huge blessing to us, and I'll get into that in a second, but other people. Um, I've seen him just help businesses just because. Just, just help them, get them out of a tough spot. Um, and it's something that you don't see with a lot of people and it's something that you can't really observe with a lot of people because a lot of people don't have that kind of power or ability. But I want to see this with a generation of conservatives. I want to see conservatives out there strive for success and wealth, not for yourself, but for the good of other people. And I don't mean paying higher taxes. I don't mean centralized planning here. But I think this is something we don't hear enough about. We hear about being successful and, and, and fulfilling your purpose for yourself, or we hear about helping somebody else because it's the right thing to do. We don't hear about striving for success, striving to be in a position of power and of wealth so that you can be, in order to be a blessing to other people. We often find ourselves between kind of two groups of people, right? On the one hand, you have the socialists who greedily covet. They really only think about what they need. Uh, to get by and from whom they're going to basically steal it, take it. On the other hand, I see this a lot with our generation. You correct me if you think I'm wrong here, Garrett. Um, With our generation, we have a lot of these sort of super wealthy younger people, often trust fund kids. They have more money than we can imagine and they primarily flaunt it. Yachts, women, watches on Instagram, that's really the lifestyle. The the wealth is the the end game in and of itself. And for most people, listen, both of those kinds of worldviews are repulsive. Most of us are somewhere between lower, middle, to upper middle class Americans. We work hard. We want to do right by our families. But I really want to see more of you, people watching, listening right now, achieve success and wealth. And this isn't some kind of a prosperity gospel that you've, you deserve it, that God wants everyone. That's not what I'm talking about. I want to see, in a very real, very tangible sense, more successful conservatives out there so that we can show the world a different way between those two. Here's something my dad said to me when I was a, a young kid. It was after a pastor actually went up and I guess sort of preached the poverty gospel. It was talking about how bad millionaires, how bad wealthy people were, and then passed the hat for his mission trip. <laughs> I remember uh, this guy said, I believe that millionaires only think about where their next million is going to come from. And he said, I, I don't know when you have that much money, why people need to, d- need to accrue more money. How many cars do you need? And my dad turned to me and he said, son, if you get to be a multimillionaire, if you get to be uh, unbelievably wealthy, he said, and I hope that you do, I always hope for good things for you, you're my son, and the only thing that you can think about is the next car to buy, you don't deserve that money, and I hope you don't get it. And that was something that stuck with me. Someone who's broke, showing a selfish heart. We often assume that Scrooge McDuck, wealthy, must be selfish, and then we miss the guy who's broke because we feel bad for him, being more selfish than we even care to admit. And I think all of us are that way. Here's what I would like to see. I'd like to see people out there set a goal of wealth with the predetermination of blessing other people. And this is something, too, that I've thought about for a while. This is, let me kind of give it, this is a bit of an aside, but I had this sort of dream for a bit, kind of, I guess you can call it a fantasy of an anti-commune. I always thought if I would get really wealthy, what I would want to do is if we could have, you know, thousands, a couple thousand people from this show all move to one county 
in the United States, just one county business That's owners, scary. employees who have good that relationships. With their, and we could just set, but it would be the opposite of a commune or socialism where everyone eats what they, we support each other, but everyone okay. earns their keep. An anti-commune, the most conservative, red-blooded county in the entire United States. I know, it probably won't happen. Maybe someday it will, but I've had this idea for a while. And you know what, that was kind of a big idea that I had at one point, which I know probably won't come to fruition. But I'm also guilty of, of dreaming small. And a lot of us don't think about that. At one point in my life, I will say this, I just thought, you know what, this is going to be all I need. If I can just make a living and, and provide for my family and, and make sure they're safe, that's all I want. And you know what, you know what changed? Uh, what really, I guess, opened up my vision a little bit? I hired two people, part-time, here at Ladder with Crowder. Uh, and they told me, after a few months, in no uncertain terms, that it was a blessing and that it would be a dream of theirs to leave their current job, to work full-time. And at the time, I wasn't even taking a salary for myself. There was no way I could afford it. But I thought, wait, wait, hold on, what? I'd never been in this position before. I'm in a position to make their lives better, to make some of their dreams, albeit however small, quitting a day job that they hate, I can make that come true. And so I invested more. We grew. Courtney and Brodigan, they did become full-time. Then we hired more people. And you know what? I got to meet, their, I got to meet your families. Got to help some people here who were, move, move in to their new homes. And, and you know, it's just, it's, it's, a, it's a hard feeling to describe until you've experienced it. And what I'm trying to drive home here is for those of you who haven't started, I guess, on your, your path, younger people, or maybe you've just not lived up to your potential. Maybe you've been lacking the motivation to fulfill your calling. I, I don't necessarily know what that means, but people write that in all the time in life advice shows. You know what? Don't think of it about, don't think of it selfishly. Don't do it for yourself. Pull yourself up by your bootstraps, slap yourself into the game, and do it for the people that you'll be able to bless. You may not be able to picture them. You may not be able to see their faces right now, but I guarantee you, if you achieve something great and you do it with a servant's heart, you will be able to help others. And it'll change your life. And back to this guy, Kevin, uh, and the, the plane. Um, let me give you, I guess, sort of a, a tangible example. So for us. Uh, when we did the U of M show, right, the U University of Michigan yeah. show, we do these live shows uh, at schools. Um, this is very hard, and everyone here works really hard in those shows. So kind of calculate this yourself. Uh, Ten round-trip tickets to Detroit. Take it from Los Angeles, from Phoenix, from Houston, wherever. Ten round-trip tickets. Just go look them up, see how much they are. At least two checked bags yep. with every single one of those tickets. Um, then also a van that has to go out because we still have to bring out the merch, a lot of our equipment. Uh, with a driver, uh, with that means hotels. At least two nights, often three nights. Mm -hmm. um, meals, we're not a union shop, so we don't do the $80 per diem, but just try and pay for people's meals. Usually it costs us a few thousand dollars in extra equipment because we have to use different AV equipment to get in there, not to yeah. mention promotional costs, or what? We have to have a half a million dollar insurance rider, security. This is very expensive, and the, not, tens of thousands of dollars every single time. Oh, yeah. Not the least of which, as it relates to the costs, uh, definitely tend to be travel. It's always a headache. It's always hard for us to do. Sometimes we can't even get enough tickets on a plane. Instead, this guy, Kevin, a friend of ours, snapped his fingers. He said, you know what? Just cover the gas. And we greased the pilot a little bit. Guy Gene, who's the most amazing awesome pilot guy. ever. That dude's awesome. Getting to know him has been a, a blessing oh, yeah. uh, in and of itself. And so we're able to do it. We're able to accomplish something that we wouldn't be able to if not for the generosity of someone else who had achieved success. And yeah, wealth. And then we have a show that's seen by thousands of people and hundreds of people traveled from states away. And the blessing beget blessing. I don't know, maybe, maybe someday we'll do a GoFundMe for a plane if okay. people, because we could probably do like at least half a dozen shows a year. We probably could increase yeah, the change my minds awesome. and crowd our confronts by 300%. It's Meet the a biggest, bunch of people. The hardest thing is the travel. It's really hard to travel with this many oh, yeah. people, especially when folks want to kill me. Uh, something, another example, my wife and I, right? We, go, we tithe at a small church. And for those of you who maybe don't necessarily go to church, Tithe, it means you give money to church. Let's put it that way. Um, we tithe to a small church where we were married, okay? We only found out afterward that after a storm, our tithe was able to um, help the church put a new roof over a senior citizen member uh, of the church after this, I think it was a hailstorm. Um, and obviously it really moved. That's not blingy. That's not an Instagram post. But we did that. You did that. Everybody who supports, everybody who joins up at Mug Club, you have made sure that everyone here has a job. You have made sure that everyone here can, 
can feed their family and raise their children. And I'm not just, that, that's the beauty of free enterprise, that's the beauty of capitalism, is that there's a voluntary exchange of monies and goods and services, but there's also something more than that, which is what I'm talking about here, is fundamentally shifting the way you look at wealth. And this week, this is a call to everyone out there, to you watching, okay? If you're watching right now, look at me. Don't, don't switch, don't have your next tab open. Was it H3H3? H3? I know that's what you watch. Absolutely. <laughs> look at me. <laughs> you out there watching, listening, um, I want you to fulfill your purpose, not, not for great things for yourself, but because you really do owe it to the world to bless them and to show them that there's a better way. I bring it up for two reasons, and we have to get going. One, I've met thousands of you out there, and I feel like I have a pretty good handle on the spirit and heart of most of you who watch the show and support it. And number two, um, I understand how the world actually works. Change can come from anyone. We hear that a lot. Yeah, that's true. But change doesn't result from everyone equally. People in positions of power and influence can create more change. They can make this world a better place. Not through taxes, not through mandates, not through uh, taking it from somebody else, but through a free enterprise, a free market of ideas, good services, talent, and yeah, through setting a better example. And I want as many of you out there watching, listening, to be wealthy, successful, and as powerful as humanly possible, so that all of us can be the next generation who, yeah, are wealthy, successful, happy, balanced, and show the world a better way. Show the world how blessing others is done. You know what? Who knows? Maybe someday we'll see you in that anti-commune. One can dream and a plane. That'd be nice. See you next time.